What's going on everybody? This is Chip Walton for Chop and Brew. In this episode, Valkyrie's Horn Mead Competition, a really cool competition that's been going on since 2019 here in the Twin Cities of Minneapolis, St. Paul. Last year, comp organizers pivoted and persevered to create a fun and very unique judging experience, and by doing so, helped rewrite the rules and guidelines on coordinating contests in the age of COVID. I sit down to talk with competition co-organizer Kevin Meinsma about the challenges they overcame, the ups and downs of virtual judging, and a look ahead to this year's Valkyrie's Horn, which is coming up fast, y'all. The entry and shipping deadline is August 20th, 2021. We'll get into that and let you know what you need to know about it. Before we get started, much love to our ongoing supporters, Imperial Yeast. Their seasonal release, Bartleby, is a Hornendal Kvike strain, which I've seen a lot of people using for meads lately. Find it at your local homebrew shop. And the Patreon party people. They are literally the bee's knees. Help them help us at patreon.com slash chop and brew. And a quick nod to our episode partner, Northern Brewer Homebrew Supply. Not only my day job, but supporter, sponsor of Valkyrie's Horn Mead Competition and the site of this year's in-person best of show judging and award ceremony. So I'm here with Kevin Meinsma, one of the organizers of Valkyrie's Horn. Before we even get into the conversation, I want to say uh, judging it last year in that very peculiar and for better or worse, unique situation, uh, considering everything we had to go through. That was a really fun time. Like I never judged at home typing into a, a computer score sheet versus like handwriting right. and I I have to say there were parts of it I really enjoyed like obviously I didn't like not being able to judge in person but some of that stuff kind of just made it flow a little mm -hmm. smoother so we'll talk about that but I just want to get that out there that uh, Valkyrie's Horn was quite an experience last year let's talk about it it's a it's a three-year competition three-year-old competition at this point yeah this is our third year mm -hmm. 2019 it went off like most competitions right traditional format in-person judging at one venue all done on a friday and saturday many many volunteers obviously who came in and the typical you know award ceremony and uh, merchandise and prizes provided by vendors for mm -hmm. the participants yeah. and that whole deal just just like we're all used to uh, and then before we talk about 2020 and 2021 um just what who came up with valkyrie's horn who's kind of the 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 posse behind the comp yeah um and who kind of so made there's it happen. there's a group of seven of us here in the twin cities area uh and honestly i think it, it kind of started at a a meetup at our home my home um where we were just talking about competitions and the fact that minnesota didn't really have a mead competition and mead is one of these things that's kind of up and coming and it well, with, and our state's just so known for turning out powerhouse mead exactly. makers. Exactly. I mean, we have how many mead makers of the year here in the state? Mm -hmm. You know, three, four at least. So it just seemed like a logical extension to say that we have a community here of people who know a fair amount about mead and are good quality judges and mead makers. Mm -hmm. And it probably makes sense for us to have a mead competition. So 2020 comes along, and in the spring it's just chaos and things start falling off left and right cbc homebrew con everything goes virtual everything kind of goes into like a digital sphere uh what was what was your thought when you when you heard that and like how did you start building a plan because your plan is literally a document that got shared around True. throughout the homebrewing community kind of became a template uh yeah. for doing this yeah so that i mean obviously it was really a struggle and you know the the good news for us unlike some of the other competitions that were coming up in short order when all this happened, right? It's like, oh, geez, everything got disrupted. But for us, our comp's in September. So we got six months to yep. maybe come up with a plan. It took about three months for us to kind of formulate the basis for what we wanted to do. And we spent a lot of time on, you know, brainstorming through ideas and, and what we could do to keep people safe and still allow them to participate without the face-to-face. -face. Yeah. And, you know, at that point, Everybody knew about Zoom and other technologies that had suddenly become so yep. prominent around the country. And we thought we could utilize that. So we did some testing 
mm. and uh, with a group of us, and you know went back and forth and did some virtual judging on our own, and kind of you know came up with a plan, yeah. and uh, figured that we could do distributed judging, which was actually very challenging because the software that we're using did not support virtual judging. Okay. Um, so we had to write our own back end for the uh, <laughs> score sheet piece. Yeah, um, sounds like Which home Dave brewing. Royer did. He's yeah. a technology guru. Uh, so he was kind enough to put, I'm sure, hundreds of hours into that process. And, and then the, the competition software itself just didn't really like the way that we needed to arrange the categories. It wasn't built for that. Now this year, mm -hmm. they've got a virtual judging setup built into the software. Okay. So it accommodates that rather nicely, which allows us to have a little bit more freedom Okay. Um, and solves a number of problems, which will be great. So because I shot a bunch of video last year of my experience, I want to kind of walk people through how this ended up uh, going down from a judge's perspective. You guys got all the entries. Mm -hmm. You sorted them out. You basically pre-built our flights in a box. Correct. And then we all, and people, like, we're talking people came from, like, Iowa, Iowa and the Dakotas. Iowa, Fargo. Yeah. Moorhead. Duluth, not sure, I think Wisconsin as well. So we came and we got our boxes and uh, Broken Clock was nice enough to kind of host yep. our seller, I guess you could, our yep. distribution seller. So we showed up, these meads were all already lined up, they were cool, we found out that day who we were getting paired with and mm -hmm. it's our obligation to like get in touch with this person, find out, do you want a Google Hangout, do you want a Zoom? But I just thought it was really like well handled as far as getting the pickup, having it already built left to right so you can't kind of mess it up. And like I said, it was on you to get in touch with your uh, judging partner in that like two or three week window. And I chose Zoom. I got paired with Ryan Richardson mm -hmm. of the Mead House. Woo -hoo! Yeah. And I had never met him before and I was about to be a new dad and he was about to be a new dad for the second or third time. I think third time. But yeah, so we were so we like started our judging just talking dad stuff. But then we got to work and I had my box laid out, I had my crackers, mm -hmm. I had water, I had bottle capper and caps yep. in case there were some like rock stars that I was like, oh well I'm gonna save gonna this for the weekend. Yeah, yeah. share with the that wife. That was another thing. Like there was and I lucked out and my flight had a lot of good mead. So I did. I was able to share under confidentiality. Everybody knew, you know, like don't put this on Facebook, but like oh, yeah. I shared some that weekend. So we're on 67. Still sweet sack. Um, so we judged and you're filling in the sheet and we, we kind of respected the process. We each did our own. Mm -hmm. We didn't talk much during it, which, you know, when you watch some of these better judge immediate episodes you're doing, a couple people have voiced like how important that is to not just like yeah. sniff something and be like, oh, yeah. leather, because you're going to start to like right. kind of taint that the other person's opinion. That is actually one of the pluses of doing virtual judging in that format. There's a lot less table talk mm -hmm. and you don't have the distractions of the people at the next table who are exclaiming yay or boo, yep. right? None of that's there, <laughs> which is, I think, very nice. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got some some funk in it. Uh, I didn't get the warming alcohol. I got some caramel. I also said the the acidity came across as like a juicy lemon. Oh, mm. it wasn't as awkward as like it seemed like it could be. It was very comfortable and 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 it felt good. So, as we go into twenty twenty one, how much of that is left behind, and how much of twenty nineteen in person are you trying to bring back? So we're doing a hybrid. Um, so basically the experience you had is being repeated. And so we have our judges who have signed up and they will come in, they will pick up their pre-built flight box. It's very similar to what you did. Yeah. You know, you'll have your pre-built package, all your little goodies that we're giving to our volunteers. Uh, we have glassware this year, really nice glassware. It's not here yet. Like a little globe no. or oh, stemware. And really nice stemware. Yeah. Um, cause we have a glassware sponsor. Oh, cool. Z Specialties um, out of California, which is a honey uh, distributor, has uh, ponied up to be our glassware sponsor. Nice. And so we have, we have some good stuff coming for this, which is awesome for the volunteers. Yeah. Right? We like to take care of people when we can. And speaking of sponsors, the reason we're in right. the lounge area of Northern Brewer World headquarters in Roseville is because the BOS 
and the award ceremony and a very and special mini boss. and mini boss, but also a very special tasting are all happening in our kind of like open floor plan break room and right. tap room, right. which is super cool. There's plenty of space here yeah, to like we, spread out and hang out. So that's awesome. We are very, very appreciative of the space. As you can imagine, under these circumstances, space is a tough thing to come by. Yeah. And Northern Brewer has been absolutely, totally supportive of everything we wanted to do. Yeah. Um, it's been awesome. So tell me, you wanted to mention that you're going to do a really cool, interesting tasting as part of kind of the, the perk of attending the, yeah. the ceremony. So Josh Holbrook is one of the new members on our uh, board, and this was his idea, and just a fantastic idea. So we're going to do a traditional mead tasting, and we're going to have the original honey that was used to make the traditional along as part of a pairing. So people who come in will have the opportunity to taste the mead and try the taste honey the to see how it's changed and what factors of the original honey ended up in the final mead. And there'll be a whole bunch of samples. We'll have commercial ones. We're gonna have some homebrew. Um, we're actually asking our uh, participants if they have a, home, a homebrew version or something, a commercial one that they wanna share, mm -hmm. bring it in. We'll line them up and you know people have an opportunity to go through that and uh, learn a few things maybe. That's gonna be super cool. Yeah, but like you said earlier, I think um, that you know remote virtual judging scenario, a lot of people who did that reported, I mean, almost uniformly how much they enjoyed the process and how easy yeah. it was and how great it actually was to be able to type score sheets in online. Yeah. You know, and I know other comps are doing it. Mazer Cups got an online form that they're using. They used last year. They'll be using it again this year, I think. Um, and some of the other comps are doing that too. Like Minnesota State Fair this year is doing mm -hmm. the same thing. Oh, um, okay. They, they have an integrated online score sheet. And they're doing distributed judging very, very similar to what we pioneered last year. Um, so, you know, obviously there are some drawbacks in a remote judging situation. Mm -hmm. um, one would be obvious, I suppose, to most people who have done competitions before. Each of you now has your own bottle. Mm -hmm. And we all know sometimes entrants send you your two or three bottles and occasionally they put the wrong bottle in there thinking it's the same as the other ones. Yeah. So what happens <laughs> if you each have different bottles? Oh, I got an IPA. Well, this is clearly, a, a, yeah. you know, a coffee mail. Yeah. Uh, okay. I don't know. What do you do? <laughs> I mean, when you're when you're apart, you may be a hundred miles apart or something. You don't yeah. really have a good way to resolve that. That's just a risk. And you know, even in face to face, there's only so much you can do there. It's not perfect. Right. None of the systems are perfect. Tap a steward and be like, "Can y'all figure this out? We'll go to another one and then we'll come back." But oh, right. when but you're at home, then, you're like, well, "Now you don't have enough to do best of show." That's the one I right? had. That's the one you had. Yeah. So that's those are all potential problems. Um, and again, for this year, we're doing remote because we didn't really know what we could expect. Yeah. Uh, we kind of planned for worst case scenario. We were thinking, oh, we'd probably be able to do everything face to face, but it became evident that we couldn't count on it. Mm -hmm. And we want to over deliver and under promise yeah. instead of the other way around. Yep. So we knew we could do virtual <laughs> judging, having done that last year. So that's the model we went with. And again, because we have three bottles, one to each of the judges in the pair who may be far apart, mm -hmm. uh, that leaves us with one bottle for best of show. And so we kind of went back to the same argument for taking it to Ken Schramm last year. We really can only have one best of show judge. Maybe we could have two, but we weren't sure. Mm -hmm. And so we didn't want to promise that if we weren't confident. Um, so we've got a single best of show judge. We were very upfront about that right from the start. It's in all of our documentation. So people mm -hmm. know that. Hopefully they're okay with it. If they aren't, they shouldn't be entering. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. what can you do? Yeah. Um, and I'm and sure. Ken, you sent the bottle, or you took the bottles actually. I did in, kind in of that did case, a, case because he was so far drop away. Off. Right. There is a, a magnificent uh, creaminess and and um, sort of uh, compote-like confected nature to the to the aromatics here that I find uh, delightfully attractive. Then he sat and judged them, and he declared he a, a SRAM worthy BOS yeah. winner. Yeah, he uh, he literally spent a couple of hours judging those 
top whatever 14 um, meats. Yeah. yeah. And you know he's got his own process for doing that. And for him again in that format, it was kind of nice. Not like your typical best of show where you basically have let's say 20 maybe 30 minutes mm -hmm. to do your best to show, Yeah. right? So he, he was able to spend all the time he wanted on them. He went through it initially, made a bunch of notes, yeah. came back to them a half hour later, Wow. retasted them, and then came back again a third time and went through all his notes and then made a final decision. And of course, one of the really cool things, I think for anybody who had items out on that table was he also talked about each of the top five meads that he judged. and kind of went through some descriptive process of what it was he tasted and what he thought about him and ultimately why he selected the best of show. And Which, I have actually never heard of a competition that has done that before. It's, uh, as one of our friends on the team says, it's, it, you know, you don't really want to go into the sausage making, mm -hmm. right? You just want the finished product. I just want the score. Tell me the score. Yeah. But, but no, that's a unique experience to have right. somebody in real time if you're in that top five, you're right. getting kind of like a master class in how he got there. Right. So Friday the 13th now, you have one week to get your entry here. And of course, that's your also your cutoff for any changes you need to make on entry description or yeah. whatever. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So for the local folks, you have a little bit more flexibility because Northern Brewer and Midwest Supplies are drop-off locations. Cool. Um, but we will be there on Friday evening to pick up. So if you don't get it there on time, it yeah. gets left behind, and I'm sorry. Yeah. And I'm going to try to get this video turned around quickly, hopefully by the 15th or 16th. So if you're just seeing this for the first time and you've got meads that you want to enter, you're probably going to have to do a two- or three-day shipping option. or. Right. Uh, and a lot of people do that. Yep. You know, they don't want them sitting on a truck for very long. Although no. during COVID, that is risky. <laughs> it is risky. There's really, they've suspended all guarantees of delivery. So oh, have they? Okay. take your chances. So, but for local regional folks, definitely consider entering. Um, what's the cap this year? 500. That's a We're, lot of mead. It's a lot of mead. <laughs> for a Think virtual about festival. 1,500 bottles. Or for a virtual comp. Yeah. Um, and I think at the moment, there's a lot of room right now. I think we're at 330 at the moment, which okay. is still a pretty good number for the circumstance. Yeah. Thank you for bringing yeah. the commemorative mead from last year. Super quick, uh, so in case we don't want to use the longer version, give me the, the Cliff Notes version of this beverage. Okay, so this is a collaboration between myself, Al Boyce, and Pat McNeely. And it's a Sazao wine that was blended with an orange muscat piment and orange blossom honey, which then sat in a third use rum barrel for nine months. Mm. And we gave this out along with one other mead that was made by Matt Whitey, mm -hmm. a uh, Heart of Darkness clone, yeah. um, to all of the judges and volunteers who helped us in the competition last year. So that's part of the judge packages yeah. that we send out. And this is just beautiful, huge, big, dark grape. We talked about kind of that cheek draining, mm -hmm. tannin. Got just enough tannin, just enough acid. But then it's juicy, sweet on both sides of that, which is yeah. cool. I think this turned out really nice. Um, we've gotten pretty good feedback on it. I haven't, and no, none of us have entered this in a competition and we won't. Hmm. because too many people have had this mead in the judging community, mm -hmm. and that just feels wrong, <laughs> right? You yeah. give it to all the judges in the area and you enter it in a competition, not, no. not really a good plan, if you ask me. So but not every mead needs to get in. Oh, no. Some meads are We're just, just enjoying it. Yeah, it's just here for us. It's here right. for the people. All right, Kevin, good luck. I have signed up to judge again. Yeah, Hopefully great you to have you. Enter or sign up to judge and good luck, brother. Thank you, man. Chop mead for chop. Mead for mead. <laughs>